Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today I'm going to share my predictions for Nintendo's next console. I've seen a lot of videos online making predictions on what Nintendo's next console could be. So I thought I would do my own take on this. I know I've already done Nintendo Switch next generation concepts in the past, but this is the last time I'm doing it, because the console could be announced at any point now, since it was confirmed to be announced before April of 2025. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Starting off with the hardware, I think the hybrid format of the Switch will return on this new console. I can already make that clear. But what improvements could be made to this new console? Well, if I'm being honest, 4K in handheld mode is not realistic. So for handheld, I'm going for a maximum of 1080p at most. And I know a lot of people are going to hate me for making a prediction like this, but AI upscaling may be involved with this to make sure that it doesn't take up too much of the console's battery life. I think it will be able to handle 4K output in docked, but not in handheld mode. But I do think a bit of work with the dock might need to be done, such as adding components and a cooling system in the dock to make sure that the console doesn't overheat. In terms of the screen, I think it will be 8 inches this time, making it around the same size as a Steam Deck OLED. It was leaked to be LCD and not OLED due to manufacturing costs, which is a downgrade in my opinion, but I think improving on the quality of the screen itself, since the original screen does feel cheap when touched, but if this new screen can match the OLED model by making it as vibrant as the OLED model, I would take LCD on the condition that the screen has better textual quality and is vibrant as the OLED screen. Oh, while you're at it, remove or shrink the bezel as well because it's not 2010. Why you need a bezel on, on the Switch? I just don't see a reason for it to be there. To end the hardware side of things, we are going to talk about the Joy-Cons. I think the Joy-Cons will be modular this time around, since the size of the Joy-Cons can be an issue for some people, and I think including small, medium, and large cases with the Joy-Cons, I think can ensure that people regardless of their hand size, can still play. Similar to what AirPods Pro have done with the, diff the different size ear tips, and this is a must for the Joy-Cons, but including Hall Effect analog sticks in these new Joy-Cons can ensure that the sticks don't drift, which has been a big issue throughout the lifespan of the Nintendo Switch. But what new features would the Joy-Cons have? If you ignored the size of the Joy-Cons and drift, what would the Joy-Cons have in terms of new features? Well, I did say that Joy-Cons would be modular in terms of size, so for the new features, I think they will include a microphone and a camera in the new Joy-Cons. I think the microphone could be used for voice chat, finally axing the need of an app, but the only other use I can think for having a microphone in the Joy-Cons is probably a Nintendo DS catalog, similar to the, the classic libraries we've had in Nintendo Switch Online throughout the Switch's lifespan. The camera would be used for recording your reactions to specific in-game moments when you use the capture button. Improved rumble and analog triggers is one thing I think could be borrowed from the PlayStation 5 just to make an ex the experience more immersive than it already is. Moving on to a feature I think could work on Nintendo's next console, especially if you already have a variety of games in your library, and that is a smart delivery style feature borrowed from the Xbox Series X and S. 
If you don't know what smart delivery is, it's a feature that ensures that you get the best version possible, depending on if you are playing it on one console or the other. So in terms of Nintendo's next console, if you insert a, a Nintendo Switch cartridge into it, it will automatically provide you with an optimized version of the game. But not all games will get upgrades at launch. I will explain later which games I think will get the treatment at launch, and games that receive this treatment would get reprints for the new console, with some of them including DLC with them, like um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for example. Implementing a smart delivery feature into the new console could save players from having to buy a game twice. And I have mentioned AI upscaling quite frequently in the video, and I know a lot of people are going to hate me for predicting a feature like this for Nintendo's next console. And for you guys who don't know what AI upscaling is, it's an upscaling method that uses simple algorithms to fill in pixels that may be missing from the screen, which uses deep learning to analyze millions of images so it can predict which colors would work with each pixel, which can help the image quality of the game to look sharper. On the original Nintendo Switch, there were games that did use AI upscaling, such as Nintendo Switch Sports, Life is Strange, True Colors, Splatoon 3, Sonic Frontiers, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which all used AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3. I think more games on the new console will use AI upscaling to ensure that games releasing on the Switch are on par with the console counterpart. I already have a feeling that Ubisoft is going to be that one studio that utilizes this the most, since I do have a feeling once this new console launches that Ubisoft are going to bring over every single Assassin's Creed game up to Valhalla, ignoring Mirage and the upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows. I want like cloud parts to be axed completely on the new console, so introducing this into some games could help axe the cloud port feature completely. Now we're moving on to my favourite part of the video, predicting the launch lineup for Nintendo's next console, which is going to be a bit tricky because I'm trying not to repeat the Switch's launch year lineup. And we're going to talk about the launch day lineup first, and then move on to launch year. For the first party games, I see them launching this new console with Pokemon Legends Zeta A as a simultaneous release with the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo's next console, and a remake of Super Mario Bros. 3. Yes! A remake of Super Mario Bros. 3 is a bit random, but I've heard rumours, so I thought I would include a remake of Super Mario Bros. 3 of some sorts. And I know it's been heavily rumoured for a while that we're getting a 3D Mario, but we'll just have to wait and see. For the smart delivery style upgrades, I've picked one or two games from each year of the Nintendo Switch's life. So for 2017, I picked The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Super Mario Odyssey. 2018, I went with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. 2019, I went with Luigi's Mansion 3. 2020, I went with Animal Crossing New Horizons. 2021, I went with Metroid Dread. 2022, I went with Splatoon 3 and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. 2023, I went with The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. 2024, I went with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, the remake, which would include Paper Luigi The Marvelous Compass as a part of the upgrade as well. And 2025, we'll have Pokemon Legend Z to A. Like I said, not all games will have upgrades available at launch, 
but these are the games I think will have the smart delivery style upgrades at launch. These are the games that I think will have them at launch. For the launch year, in terms of first party games, I think we will get four waves of smart delivery style upgrades in March, June, September, and December. And in terms of the games, I think we are going to get Pokemon Legends Z to A in March, a remake of Super Mario Bros. 3 in March, Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition in May, a new IP in July, Metroid Prime 4 in August, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time remake in September, a Luigi Mansion 1 remake in October, Pokemon Golden Dawn and Silver Waves, which is a remake of Gold and Silver, in November, and Mario Kart 9 in December. Yes, I get this lineup as mostly remakes, but these are the games I think are in need of remakes, and I think could be alright games to pick for the launch lineup. And in terms of third party releases at launch, I think we will get Fortnite, Overwatch 2, Persona 5 Royal, Persona 3 Reload, and Hogwarts Legacy. Yet again, it's unpredictable what third party games could actually make it to this new console. I don't see GTA 6 releasing on this thing, only because of like, power reasons. GTA 5 may depend on if Rockstar actually does rework the game to actually get it to run on this new console. I do think a wide variety of games from third parties will release on this thing, but the only games I don't see running on it, like I just said, are Cyberpunk 2077 and GTA 6. But on the Nintendo Switch Online side of things, I think all six libraries w so far will carry over to the new console, with some new games added in. But two new libraries could be added within the launch year of the new console, that being GameCube and Nintendo DS, which won't release until the summer of the console's launch. Sega Dreamcast Nintendo Online would launch in year two. The GameCube will launch with six games being Super Smash Bros. Melee, Super Mario Sunshine, Metroid Prime, Mario Kart Double Dash, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and Super Mario Strikers. I know that a lot of GameCube games are being ported physically, but I think an online service for GameCube could be used so the games that are not planned on being ported over by Nintendo have somewhere to go. Because I don't see ports of Smash Melee or Mario Kart Double Dash happening, so I think an online app for GameCube games, I think that's where they will end up. And DS games with the new microphone feature in the Joy-Cons, I think we'll end up with eight games at launch. With Mario Kart DS, New Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, The Phantom Hourglass, Mario and Luigi, Partners in Time, WarioWare Touched, Super Mario 64 DS, Pokemon Ranger, and 42 all-time classics. The library for Nintendo Online will expand with more consoles, but unfortunately, because a majority of Wii U games are ported over, I don't think Wii U will get the treatment. I don't think 3DS will either, and I think they will go up to Wii in terms of online retro game collections, but I'm not expecting Wii games to get added until halfway into the system's life. But I do think a few Sega consoles, such as the Dreamcast and the Game Gear, could also make the mix as well. And to end the video off, we are now on to when the new console could be announced and released. For the announcement, I predict that September of 2024 is when it will be announced. I think that two models will be announced in this trailer. The standard model, which does everything I explained in the video, and the light model, 
which wouldn't have dock which wouldn't be dockable or have 4K capabilities. I think we will get a Nintendo Direct focused on this new console in December of 2024, sometime around the Game Awards. I I'm guessing that the new console will launch in March of 2025 because the Nintendo Switch launched in March of 2017 and the console would launch with Pokemon Legends ZTA and a remake of Super Mario Bros. 3. I predict that six models will be released throughout the system's life but we are only talking about two of them in terms of cost. The standard model would go for $399.99. The reason for having a price tag like this is because of all the features implemented into this new console. And the light model would go for $249.99. And I think this is the more cost effective model, which would be provided at launch instead of two years after launch. The only difference between this model and standard is that the docking capabilities and 4K will be axed, which I already have mentioned. So guys, what did you think of my prediction for the next console? And like I said at the beginning of the video, I know I've already done videos like this in the past, but this is the last one, for real this time, because the console could be announced at any point now. And I might do two more prediction videos in June, one predicting the next Mario Kart game, and the other predicting the next Smash Bros game. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.